gosh, it's homework time. Here we are again. Lesson two of module five. Let's start out in the proper way. Jot your name down at the top. Hey, I tell you, I like it when my students put both first and last name. Shows a degree of diligence. So go ahead and do so. And then let's put today's date. All right, today you write the actual date where and when you are in this wonderful world of ours. And right here, what we're looking at are just instructions with an example, and then we'll go on to BC. Pretty straightforward, dare I say, easy homework tonight. Um, it's the same, because it's the same objective as lesson one. Same thing we're learning. We're drawing tape diagrams, uh, decomposing some fractions. All right, so step one is to draw and shade a tape diagram of the given fractions they've done here. See, dealing with five, six, there are five out of six shaded in, five out of six. The whole tape is one. And as we saw back in lesson one, sometimes a portion of the tape comprises one whole. We'll get to those. And then rec record the decomposition as a sum of unit fractions. Remember, unit fractions is just a fancy way of saying that has a numerator of one, has a one in the top there. So five, six is going to be one, six, and one, six, and one, six, and one, six, and one, six. Yeah, and then record the decomposition of the fraction two more ways, like 5 is 2 plus 2 plus 1, right? And 5 is 1 and 4, so you can record 5, 6 in these other two ways. So uh, that's all we have to do here, and let's go on to the actual examples B and C. Shall we? Oh, we shall. Well, all right, here we are. So now it's our turn. You notice both of these are proper fractions, 6 eighths. 7 tenths, they're proper fractions because the numerator is less than the denominator. So I'm going to use my fancy little rectangle tool because that's one of the things I have the hardest time with, I tell you, is drawing a nice little rectangle. Then I'll switch back to pencil and start getting messy again. So we want to split this into eight equal parts. The whole thing will be one. And we said the trick for that, well, you're drawing seven lines, but with eight, with four and eight and such, it's, there's a way of doing it. Split in half. Split the halves in half, right? And now we have fourths. So if I split each of these fourths in half, I will then have eighths. And while being subject to limits of human, human imperfection, it's pretty good, right? So we got eighths there. And now uh, I'm going to color in six out of the eight. Show six eighths, two, three, four, five, six, that's six out of eight. And the whole thing here, remember, represents one whole, okay, eight eighths. And then what is the part here? That's right there is six out of eight, six eighths. So as a sum of unit fractions, that was our, our next uh, ingredient to this recipe of mathematical madness is to say, well, 6 is 1 added 6 times. Okay, so 6 eighths is going to be 1 eighth and 1 eighth and 1 eighth. <laughs> See, unit fractions have a numerator of 1. And there's our fourth one, 1 eighth, and a fifth one, 1 eighth, and yes, the sixth one, 1 eighth. And double check. Three, six, okay, good. Did it right. And then we want to record it in two other ways. So I can say that six eighths, another way of doing it is, well, what can you add to get six? Well, we can do three and three. How's that? Is that what you were thinking? Hey, me too. Three and three makes six, right? So three eighths and three eighths is six eighths. And notice that they're born eighth, they die eighth, they is eighths. They're eighths. Nothing's changing with the eighths here. Um, they are eighths. Um, and let me do it, let me get a little fancier, and, and do it with uh, three terms. So, for example, I could uh, be even cutesy with it and say 1 and 2 and 3 is 6, isn't it? Haha, -ha, 1, 2, 3. So 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths is 6 eighths. Same idea here with 7 tenths, except that tenths is a bit more of a pain to draw. And I wish they'd stop making us having to do things like tenths and twelfths. They're just a pain to draw. Ooh, did I say that out loud? Oh, yes, I did. Okay, so I need to draw nine lines inside this rectangle and try to 
evenly space them so I end up with something approximating tenths. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and see it is a little too big. See, so I, I, I'm glad I make mistakes like this because, hey, I can show you that, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a teacher or who you are, what you are, what I, did I just do? Um, you know, hey, not everything comes out perfect all the time. I'm trying, what I'm trying to do, my friends, there we go, is bring that in a little bit. So now, let me see, make sure I have 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. And see, so you would have used your eraser there, but I fumbled around with these mechanical tools. So seven out of ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, leaving three tenths. Okay, everything checks out there. Well, you still have to ask, does my answer make sense? And the whole thing is a grand glorious one whole. So sum of unit fractions, because they like making us work, I tell you. We have to write one-tenth seven times. So you could even kind of do this in, in a, uh, you know, I'll show you how to do this in more of a uh, factory assembly line way. So I'm going to write one seven times. So two, three, four, five six, seven, and then make all my fraction bars, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then write all my tenths, two, three, four, five, I'm still like six, and seven, then add all my addition signs, one, two, and now I have six of these, three, four, five, and six, there we go, Whew. that was fun, thanks, okay. So seven tenths, another way to think of it, is red and blue make purple. And only my students know what I'm talking about there. So three tenths and four tenths, right? And there are other ways I could do this, like five and two, six and one, right? You know, other ways. Could even do seven and zero. Whoa, craziness. Um, but let me do one where I break it into three add-ins. Um, so how about uh, two tenths? and two tenths, sure, why not? And then three tenths, right, would make seven. Yay, look at, that's why I said, dare I say uh, simple homework tonight. Let's go on to number two. All right, number two is pretty much the same thing. We're gonna draw and shade a tape diagram and record a decomposition three different ways using number sentences, which we were doing before. But now they're just actually, they're making it easier in a sense because they're not insisting on the uh, sum of unit fractions. So we don't have to do the one plus one plus one thing, which is nice because you see this first one here is 12. So we'd have to write out one twelfth. Yeah, that's right, 12 times. So thanks, we won't be doing that. Appreciate it. So I'm going to draw my happy little rectangle. And now I need to notice, oh, by the way, this is a proper fraction again as we had on the first few, um, where the numerator is less than the denominator. Although when we get to B here, yes, we'll start encountering some that are greater than one, that are improper fractions. So I need to draw 11 lines within this rectangle. Hopefully I get it right the first time here uh, in order to have 12 partitions. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11. Whoo! Good enough for government work, as they say. So this whole thing is 12 twelfths, right? It's one whole. And I'm shading in 10 out of the 12. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, lightning, 6, 7, 8. Remember, I'm going to 10. Don't lose track and space out. We all do it. 9, 10, leaving 2, okay, 10, 2 is 12, it checks out there. Does my answer make sense? And so this right here, this jobber is 10 twelfths, beautiful. And so I can uh, decompose this fraction three different ways, no problem. 10 twelfths, well, what could I call it? Well, I could call it 1 twelfth and 2 twelfths, and how many more would I need? 
because I'll do one in three add-ins to start with. One and two is three. I need seven more to make ten. I see that. Seven what? Seven twelfths. That's right. And let's go up here and do it two more ways. So ten twelfths, another way I could write that is what? Well, ten is five and five. How do we do a nice straightforward one? Five twelfths and five twelfths will make ten twelfths. What's another way I could do it? And by the way, don't limit yourself to what I'm doing here. Come up with your own ways, all right? Be creative. Have fun. Maybe? Yeah? Okay. Uh, how about four and six? Oh, not very creative, but fun. Four and six make ten, right? Four twelfths and six twelfths makes ten twelfths. And there we go. Recorded three different ways. Let's draw our rectangle for five-fourths. Now, here's how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to deal with the one hole to start with. So this rectangle here, I'm going to just do with my one hole. And I want to divide it into fourths. Okay, so let me just start there, which is easy. You do in half, and then split the halves in half, and you have fourths. And I'm going to mark this. This is one hole. And when, when, so I'm doing it this way on purpose, so you can see I have to do five fourths. So there's one, two, three, four fourths. Ah, I need another fourth over here in order to have five fourths. And what I really want you to see there is that five fourths is greater than one. You see, before I drew that fifth fourth, I had one hole and then another fourth. So one and one fourth. Four fourths and one fourth is five fourths. And in fact, that's exactly how I want to record that first one. So the whole thing here, by the way, is indeed five fourths. So that first one, I want to record Wow, that's a sloppy five. And five's my favorite number. It is. Okay, uh, is four-fourths and one-fourth. And you know what? I'm going to write that same thing in a different way. I can say that five-fourths is one whole. And notice I'm making that as tall as the fraction. Okay, it doesn't have to be ginormous, but it has to be as big as your fractions. One and one-fourth. You see that? We have the one hole and another fourth. Great. Um, and what's just another way I could do it? Why don't we say five-fourths equals what? Yeah, let's do uh, three add-ins. We didn't do three add-ins. So let's do three-fourths. Well, that only leaves one way for me to do it. Three-fourths with one-fourth and one-fourth will give me five-fourths. Yes? All right, so there we go. Hey, we are already rounding the corner to doneness here. Let's round that corner. Aha! Here we are! Look, we have an improper fraction. Again, six-fifths. Similar idea to five-fourths, right? We have one more than one. Um, and then, look at that. A mixed number, yes. One and one-fourth. Ah. <sighs> You see what they're playing. Ooh, we're on to you, Eureka Mathematicians. All right, so let's draw six-fifths. And I'm going to do it the same way I did before. I'm going to draw five-fifths. I'm going to draw one hole first and then go from there. And so I can't split it down the middle. I need to draw four lines. Uh, it's only when I have an odd number I can do that. So one, two, three, four. Hey, not... Bad. I'm getting good at this. One. I'll get cocky. Now I'll mess up. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so there's five fifths, right? Five out of five. That's one hole right there. But to make six fifths, so I want you to see that there's five fifths. Six fifths is more than one. I have to draw on another fifth here. All right. And so that is my six-fifth. So the whole thing, I'll mark down here, the value of this fraction indeed is as it should be, six-fifths. So how can I decompose six-fifths? Well, let's do as we did with our, our previous one in B with another improper fraction. Let's do six-fifths is five-fifths and one-fifth. And let's do as we also did on that last one and, and make sure that you know, we make clear, hey, six-fifths 
is equal to one whole and one more fifth. So you see five out of five is the whole pizza pie, right? Five fifths equals one. So these two say the same thing essentially just in different ways. All of them do. Uh, so six fifths, what's another way I can write it? Well, let's do three add-ins. We didn't do that. Um, well, to make six, can I do one and two and three? Yeah, so one fifth plus two fifths plus three fifths is six fifths. Okay, so now let's jump down and the one and one fourth. Okay, I'm not going to pretend you don't know because you do. Didn't we just do that in B? Just written as five fourths. It, they are equivalent. One's an improper fraction, five fourths. This is a mixed number. Think of it in terms of money. It works easily here because a quarter is a quarter, right? One fourth is a quarter, like you think of money quarter. If you had five quarters, five fourths, if you had five quarters, wouldn't you have a one dollar and one quarter? You would. It's the same thing. So we're going to draw this the same way as we did last time. We'll start off by drawing the one whole, which we can split into fourths by splitting it in half and then splitting the halves in half, labeling this bad boy as one whole. And so when we're talking about, so there's the one whole. And I could also draw this, and perhaps that's what Eureka wants, without the fourth divisions, but I'm doing that for you um, because A, it's correct, and B, I want you to see that one whole equals four fourths. And so there's my one whole, and then I need that additional one fourth over here. So the whole shebang, we have the one whole and another fourth, it's one and one fourth. I'm gonna keep pointing out to you that the uh, Oh my goodness, that's a one. Uh, that the, the, the size of the whole number one should be as tall as the fraction. Okay, so let's write this out three different ways. So one and one fourth equals, well, let's, let's do it. Although we did it up above, let's make sure that we let our teacher know that we understand, hey, that's one whole and one fourth. And again, I know we just did this up there, but let's make it clear to our teacher. We understand that this is the same thing as saying four-fourths and one-fourth. That one whole is equal to four-fourths. And then we'll just come up with another way of doing it. I can't remember what we did up above, but let's do... Well, so essentially we have five-fourths here, right? And that's why I divvied this up so you could see the five-fourths. Um, oh, let's do sum of unit fractions because it's not so bad here. So one, two, three... Four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then force, 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 plus, 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 and plus it plus. So one and one fourth is a fourth and a fourth and a fourth and a fourth and a fourth. Woo! Yeah! And can you believe what we just did? We just finished your homework time. Nice job completing yet another homework time. And I will see you again next time. It is once again homework time. <music>